City Council regular meeting Tuesday, November 17th, 2020, 6.30 p.m. Civic Center, 115 South 4th Street. Ron, will you lead us in prayer, please? Father, we just uh, thank you for the day you've given us and just uh, blessing us with the opportunity to uh, live and serve in this community. And Father, at this time, we just raise up the City Council to you just to lead God and direct on your upcoming decisions. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Please be seated. Roll call, please. Shannon. Here. Michael. Here. Michael. Jamie. Here. Jamie. Here. Jamie. Here. Jamie. Here. Jamie. Here. Jamie. Here. Item number one, discuss and act on approval of consent agenda, a financial reports for October 2020. B, minutes of meeting held in October 2020. C, claims for the month of October 2020. Motion to approve. Second. Roll call, please. Shannon. Yes. Shannon. Yes. Christy. Yes. Jennifer. Yes. Item number two, discuss and act on approval of payment to AEP, PSO, in the amount of $18,717.59. Motion to approve. Second. Roll call, please. Shannon. Yes. Shannon. Yes. Christy. Yes. Jennifer. Yes. Can we add to the minutes? Michael Dickey is here. Sure. <clears throat> yeah. Okay. <laughs> I didn't remember if I finished my payment. Item number three, discuss and act on approval of payment to fuel man in the amount of nine thousand six hundred and thirty eight dollars and fifteen cents. Michael motion to approve. Second. Roll call please. Shannon. Yes. Michael. Yes. Jana. Yes. Christy. Yes. Jennifer. Yes. I have a simple note to say about fuel man. It's getting fewer and fewer stations are carrying that right now. Mm -hmm. I don't know if we may have to look at a different <clears throat> company card or whatever. But something I think we How they need to do. A lot of the stations have started taking it. I don't know why. I don't know. It takes a long time to get your money, I think, from like 60 days. And it's a discounted rate, of course. But I don't know for sure. And I don't know that there's a better option at all. I really don't. But I know that there's stations that really stop, quite a few stop taking <clears throat> the Okay. Item number four, discuss and act on approval of payment to emergency medical services in the amount of $10,334.26. Make a motion to approve. Second. Second. Roll call, please. Shannon. Yes. Michael. Yes. Jana. Yes. Christy. Yes. Jennifer. Yes. Item number five, discuss and act on approval of payment to Henrietta Economic Development Authority in the amount of $10,102.97. Motion to approve. Second. Roll call, please. Shannon. Yes. Michael. Yes. Jana. Yes. Christy. Yes. Jennifer. Yes. Item number six, discuss and act on approval of payment to Bank of Oklahoma in the amount of $40,246.66 for the 2015 note series monthly payment. Motion to approve. Second. Roll call, please. <coughs> Shannon. Yes. Michael. Yes. Shannon. Yes. Christy. Yes. Jennifer. Yes. Item number seven, discuss and act on approval of ordinance number 1274, an ordinance amending ordinance number 702, for purpose of rezoning certain property located at 1201 Westmore <coughs> from R1 single family residential district to R3 manu manufactured home district. Jody, you have no problem with this, correct? No, the, it was passed by planning and zoning and all the fees were paid and the legal's done. And, and we've done it multiple times in the past and yes. everything is in line as previous. Yes. Make <clears throat> a motion to approve. Second. Roll call, please. Shannon. Yes. Michael. Yes. Jana. Yes. Christy. Yes. Jennifer. Yes. Item number eight, discuss and act on declaring an emergency on ordinance number 1274. Motion approved. Second. Roll call, please. Shannon. Yes. Michael. Yes. Jana. Yes. Christy. Yes. Jennifer. Yes. Item number nine, discuss and act on approval of ordinance number 1275, an ordinance of the city of Henrietta, Oklahoma. Adopting and enacting the 2020 the Henrietta Code of Ordinances, compiled, revised, and published by the authority of the Council for the City of Henrietta, Oklahoma, containing the permanent and general ordinances of the City of Henrietta, also repealing all ordinances of permanent and general nature not included in the Code, 
providing for additions and amendments to the code and declaring an emergency. Every 10 years we have to do code stuff and that's what this is. Codify. <clears throat> to codify yeah. it all, get it together. We do that every year, but then the whole book has okay. to be re redone every 10. Yes. Motion, Motion to approve. Second. Roll call please. Shannon. Yes. Michael. Yes. Shannon. Yes. Christy. Jennifer. Yes. Item number 10, discuss and act on declaring an emergency on ordinance number 1275. Mm -hmm. Please. Shannon. Yes. Michael. Yes. Shannon. Yes. Christy. Yes. Yes. Item number 11. Discuss and act on approval of resolution number 1272, a resolution of the City of Henrietta, Oklahoma, notifying the residents of said city of the adoption of newly compiled code of ordinances for the said city of Henrietta, Oklahoma, in compliance with the laws of the state of Oklahoma. <clears throat> Motion to approve. Second. Roll call, please. Shannon. Yes. Michael? Yes. Jana? Yes. <coughs> Jennifer? Yes. Item number 12, discuss an act to reappoint Kay Ashley to the Board of Adjustments. Motion approved. Second. Roll call, please. Shannon? Yes. Michael? Yes. Jana? Yes. Christy? Yes. Jennifer? Yes. Item number 13, discuss an act on transferring the West Side property to Henriette Economic Development Authority for the purposes of economic development as specified. A, part of the Northwest 1-4th Section 14 T11NR12E IM, Henrietta, Altmaugie County, Oklahoma, also being the north 12 acres of the tracts described in the book 2249, page 746, and book 2031, page 801, said part being more particularly described as follows. Commencing at the southwest corner of said Northwest 4th, then in 01 degree 20, 28 west along the west line of the said northwest quarter, a distance of 527.10 feet to the point or place of the beginning, thence continuing along the west line of the said northwest corner. In 01 degree 20, 28 W, a distance of 791.35 feet, thence north 88 degree 5349E, a distance of 660.57 feet, thence S01 degree 2013E, a distance of 791.35 feet, thence S 88 degree 5349 west, a distance of 660.52 to the point of place of beginning, containing 522,720 square feet, I believe. Million. So oh, we're in millions. See, I don't even know where we're at anymore. <laughs> because the dot has there's got a decimal. Right it's it's right right right. It looks. Yeah, there's a decimal. Yeah. Yeah. So that's why I'm confused why we have four zeros after a decimal, but right. it's there. And that's how it is in the thing. So square feet. It's a legal description of the West property for them to build a hotel and a travel plaza. So John and I have, and Donna have figured out that this is a mess because Peta put all the property in the city name because that's what we were told to do at the time but the city cannot give property away because it's illegal and we'll go to jail for doing that. So we have to transfer it back to HEDA so HEDA can sell it to them for fair market value. So that's what this is all about. Uh, yeah, and Jennifer, the only, other, the only thing I would add to that, I think one of the questions was, he, he wanted it donated. Mm -hmm. And I, I've reviewed the trust indenture, and I think it says the trustees can dispose of real or personal property however they deem fit as long as it's uh, for economic development. So, so once what I, we transfer it to HEDA, what you're saying is HEDA can decide yeah, what they I, want to do you know, for economic development, but the I, city can't do that. No, HEDA, HEDA I think, can gift it. But I, th I think the question becomes, you know, there's got to be stipulations, uh, requirements, I mean, that performances on his part. I mean, I think that's where it's going to get sticky, I think. 
we just don't want it. We can't give the land and then he do nothing with it or turn around and give it. Give yeah, it what Hedda had specified before was one year, is what we discussed. So, and Bruce and I both sit on that board, but we had discussed one yeah, year for development. Yeah, a letter of intent, or I mean, it's got to spell out, you know, what's going to be done, and and I think we need, you know, speci more specifics. But we'll rely on you for that. Oh, oh, well, thank you. I'll <laughs> <laughs> entertain a motion. Motion. Motion to approve. Second. Roll call, please. Shannon. Yes. Michael. Yes. Anna. Yes. Christy. Yes. Jennifer. Yes. Item number 14, discuss an act on hazard pay of $1,200 to all full-time employees and $400 for part-time employees for being public servants and providing services needed to our city and citizens in ongoing COVID-19 pandemic. The city got um, CARES Act money and the employees have not received any hazard pay. We have not altered their um, money in any way, shape, or form. So we do have the money to do it. Donna and I both talked to Crawford and Associates. It is something that can be done. They have worked hard for it. It's been a whole change in their lives, too, of everything that they do. It's hard to work in a mask. It's hard to do all the things that have to be done for a COVID pandemic. And it's not getting any better. And it's making it harder and harder on them every day. I mean, the police department has no idea who they're coming in contact with. Every person that they stop. Even if they have twitches or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> That's caused from COVID. <laughs> but it's been a lot of work. They've worked really hard. Most of them haven't missed work. They've been coming to work and doing what needs to be done for the city of Henrietta, and the city wouldn't be what it is if it wasn't for all the workers. Motion to approve. Second. Roll call, please. Shannon. Yes. Michael. Yes. Jana. Yes. Christy. Yes. Jennifer. Yes. Item number 15, discuss an act to give interim city manager the authority to give one-time pay adjustments to hour, hourly and salaried employees, not less than 150, but not to exceed $500. Um, talk to Crawford's about it. Our tax base really hasn't altered. It's been up. And we have done well, considering we are in the middle of a pandemic. Uh, so we gave this last year a one-time pay adjustment for December, and I just felt that you know, although they worked hard for their hazard pay, why should we punish them and still not give them their one-time pay adjustment as well? Motion Second. Roll call, please. Shannon. Yes. Michael. Yes. Shannon. Yes. Christy. Yes. Jennifer. Yes. Item number 16, discuss and act on city manager public work director's report. Evan Motor replaced 200 horsepower motor and pump on our high service distribution system. Quicksilver contractors are in phase two working on the settling plates for the clarifier number one. <clears throat> um, preparation for water main repair at the end of the month. Um, that'll be a significant water repair and we're Jason and Ron have been working hard on getting everything in for that so we're prepared for whatever occurs and make sure there's no slip ups or issues when it comes to it. Water department has been working. Um, they've also been working on the dam. We had to submit a report to OWRB on the dam and what we're going to do is going to be a significant amount of work as well because some of the underground systems have eroded away. We had the armor races here last weekend and they said it was the largest in the world for vintage races <clears throat> and appreciated their time at the park and Trampas and Sherry Parker, we drove through it today, checked everything and it's better than it was when they went out there. I didn't even see a piece of trash anywhere. I'll entertain a motion. Make a motion that we approve the city manager report. Second. Roll call, please. Shannon. Yes. Michael. Yes. Shannon. Yes. Christy. Yes. Jennifer. Yes. 
Item number 17, discuss and act on new business. Can I say something about COVID? Mm -hmm. Thank you. I work at the hospital. I'm sure you get this on time. You want to speak yeah. up? Because I got my mask on. Oh, guys, it's getting worse. Please, let's wear our masks. We're not in high school anymore. We're not in middle school. No one's going to make fun of you. You're not going to be a sissy. Just wear your mask because if you've ever seen someone ready to die from COVID, it changes your mind. And you've got to wear masks. Kids can't go to school. Patients can't see their family in nursing home, just wear a mask. It's just simple. If I can go to work every day and wear a hairnet, two masks, and goggles, and gown and gloves, you can wear a mask. That's all I'm asking. That's all I want to say. Thank you. Item number 18, adjourn. Motion approved. Excuse me, I'd like to speak. I'm sorry, I'm new to all this. Okay. Um, my name is Jordan Henry. Um, I'm not good at public speaking, so I apologize if I stutter or I mumble or anything. But um, I lived here for uh, a year and a half now. Um, we just bought a home on West Common Street. Um, the reason I came here tonight was to discuss uh, like issue with uh, like loose dogs and cats. Um, I mostly want to talk about dogs tonight. Um, we just bought a home on West Cummings, and we've lived there for about six months now. And we've had nothing but issues with neighbors or just stray dogs in general. Um, We've called the dog catcher. You know, we've had lots of issues with that. Um, I do have some notes on my phone for like the municipal codes and stuff like that as well. But um, mostly we're 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 trying to get um, like stricter like leash laws, higher fines. We're trying to stop this from happening. Um, we were uh, like not physically attacked, but we were approached by one of the neighbor's dogs. Real rough looking thing. Wasn't fixed or anything like that. And like, I'm a huge animal lover, love animals, and I almost had to kill this dog. And I don't own a gun, you know, I, I would have had to do this like myself, which already affects me, like, you know, a lot. But um, we, uh, we, we walk our dog you know, all around town, but we've had, you know, the, the neighbor's dogs across the street next to us, you know, they've come on my property, they've gone after my dog, and I'm worried that like, one day she's gonna be out walking my dog and something's gonna happen. I don't want anything to happen to my dog, much less my wife. So um, we're definitely looking for better enforcement with this and much higher fines. I want people to be made an example of when it comes to this, because like I'm originally from New York, we've never had this kind of problem. And I realize like down here the weather is a lot nicer, which I'm super happy about. But uh, like dogs are being dumped, there's puppy mills everywhere, there's just loose dogs like all over the place. Um, it's section four one zero two. Dot, uh, dot one says animals not to be at large. Um, no owner shall permit any animal, including fowl, owned, harbored, or kept by him to be at large within the city. It is unlawful for any animal to be, in, uh, excuse me, unlawful for any animal as provided in this section to be at large at any time within the city. Um, then I, I do have a section about, you know, defend, defending yourself from, yeah. you know, an animal, as well as the fines, and the fines are apparently impeded by the, the, the council. Um, like as I said multiple times already, like we're looking for like much higher fines. And I realize that the police have better things to do than chase down people's dogs. I don't know how it would work, but if you know if, if you're charging people a much higher fine, maybe if the police officers are able to get a kickback. If they're from not that, paying them, that's what we've ran into. Then the we're, way that I'm looking actually at actually transporting the dogs right now, we're correct. only keeping them for twenty four hours and we're taking them to Pittsburgh County. Okay. So that's what we've been doing that for a while. Yes, there is a dog problem. There's always going to be a dog problem because, like you said, there's puppy mills. There's people just having puppies because they won't get them fixed. Um, so if you've called in for the dog catcher, you've met Daryl. Yeah, um, I've only met him the once. That was the, the afternoon that we were, uh, were attacked by like this pit bull. And my opinion, that man did nothing. He chased the dog with some pepper spray, and then the dog ran off. And then <clears> he didn't chase it. He didn't go after it. And I, I, like I said, I've only met him the once. Maybe I don't know. Maybe he eventually caught it but we actually saw it maybe an hour or so later as like the owner came home and I haven't been able to speak to the owner since I haven't seen them at all um, when it comes to like the puppy mills and sending like them off and stuff and I realize that people aren't paying fines I don't know if like imprisonment is a, a thing I realize it's kind of ridiculous to put, put somebody in jail over this but um, I did some research and there's a website called dogsbite.org that is specifically for like information like this um, they said in 2019, 
over 14,000 people were put into the hospital strictly for dog attacks, 27% of them were children. I drive down West Cummings like from Frisco to get to my house every day, there's tons of kids, but I also see tons of dogs. I mean, I, I don't have any children of, like, of my own, but I wouldn't want to see like the neighbor's kid get ripped apart by whether it's a pit bull or a Yorkie, it doesn't matter. So that's why I'm calling for stricter enforcement. And like I realize you said, you said, you know, they're not paying fines, euthanize the animal, imprison the person, take away driver's licenses, hunting licenses, whatever needs to be done. Because it's not fair to the people who pay their taxes and obey the law <coughs> that we can't go for a walk without looking over our shoulder thinking that the dogs will attack us. Somebody like myself, I might be able to defend myself from a dog, not attack the dogs. Whether or not she's able to defend herself from a dog, I don't know. But that, that's where I'm standing at this now. Um, I appreciate your time. I'm, well, I'm not glad sure. you came. We'll look into it and okay. see. Talk to Daryl and the chief of police because that goes through police. Right. I do recommend if you have issues though to call the non-emergency oh. that the uh, six five two three one zero six number. So um, we we actually did call the dispatch office the one day that like, this happened, and um, I'm not sure who was working that day. I know it was a female, and I told her that I almost had to like kill this animal because it was coming after us, and she told me that it's not legal to kill an animal within city limits. But I told her I'd already looked up the, the municipal codes. So somebody higher up needs to pass on some education because these people don't even know what their own codes. Whether or not it was a police officer or a volunteer, that doesn't matter. Whoever is sitting there and taking these calls needs to be educated when it comes to this. <clears throat> so like that's all we're asking for. I, I don't want to be arrested for defending myself when it comes against an animal. And um, as I was trying to say, like with like higher fines if they're paying them or whatever, I don't know if you're able to like give the police a kickback for like catching these animals and like getting like these fines paid because I know like it's a small town like the cops aren't making like you know New York City dollars I get that but like you know right and there's only two or three a shift so exactly you know, when yeah. they're doing reports and calls and taking care of crime they're not gonna have time to go chase dogs exactly and that's what I'm saying like if they see something and like they're not doing anything it'd be nice if they did you know something about the animal and then they got reimbursed for taking like the two minutes out of their day to whether it is to corral this animal or put this animal down and like i said i'm a huge animal lover and euthanasia is the last thing on my list but when it comes to me and my family whether it's her or my pets they're going to come first so that's my issue that well was, you have the right to defend yourself nobody would tell you otherwise no yeah and i understand that um but yeah th that's what i have I, I like i said i'm not sure what we could do about this um but yeah, I don't want to have to murder an, an animal, especially in front of like a child or a family, especially if it comes after one of my own. Okay. So. All right, I appreciate you coming tonight, and we'll look into it. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Item 18, adjourn. Do you have a motion? Do you have a motion? Second. Roll please. Shannon. Yes. Michael. Yes. Shannon. Yes. Yeah. Christy. Yes. Jennifer. Yes. Henrietta Municipal Authority, regular meeting Tuesday, November 17th, 2020, 6.30 p.m. Civic Center, 115 South 4th Street. Roll call, please. Shannon. Here. Michael. Here. Jana. Here. Christy. Here. Jennifer. Yeah, here. Whatever. <laughs> <laughs> Item number one, discuss and act on approval of consent agenda, A, financial reports for October 2020, B, minutes of meeting held October 2020, <coughs> claims for the month of October 2020. <clears throat> Motion to approve. Second. Yes. Michael. Yes. Jana. Yes. Christy. Yes. Jennifer. Yes. Item number two, discuss and act on approval of payment to Center Point Landfill in the amount of fourteen thousand seven hundred dollars. <coughs> Motion approved. Second. Roll call, please. Shannon. Yes. Michael. Yes. Jana. Yes. Christy. Yes. Jennifer. Yes. Item number three, discuss and act on approval of payment to OWRB 09-0029-CW in the amount of eleven thousand one hundred ninety-three dollars and twenty-six cents for the monthly payment. Motion to approve. Second. Roll call, please. Shannon. Yes. Michael. Yes. Shannon. Yes. Christy. Yes. Jennifer. Yes. Item number four, discuss and act on approval of payment to ORF 08-0015-DW in the amount of $37,962.14. Motion to approve. Second. Roll call, please. Shannon. Yes. Michael. Yes. Shannon. Yes. Christy. Yes. Jennifer. Yes. Item number five, discuss and act on approval of purchase of caustic soda in the amount of $20,000 for the water treatment plant. Motion to approve. Second. Roll call, please. Shannon. 
Yes. Michael? Yes. Jana? Yes. Christy? Yes. Jennifer? Yes. Item number six, discuss and act on approval of purchase of ferric chloride in the amount of $19,000 for the water treatment plant. Motion to approve. Second. Roll call, please. Shannon? Yes. Michael? Yes. Jana? Yes. Christy? Yes. Jennifer? Yes. Item number seven is reiterated because it's two different boards. Discuss and act on hazard pay of $1,200 to all employees and $400 for the part-time employees for being public servants and providing the services needed to our city and citizens in the ongoing COVID pandemic. Motion for a second. Roll call, please. Shannon. Yes. Michael. Yes. Shannon. Yes. Christy. Yes. Jennifer. Yes. Item number eight. Discuss and act to give interim city manager the authority to give one-time pay adjustments to our hourly and salaried employees, not less than 150, but not to exceed 500. Motion to approve. Second. Roll call, please. Shannon. Yes. Michael. Yes. Jana. Yes. Christy. Yes. Jennifer. Yes. Item number nine, discuss and act on new business. No new business. Item number 10, adjourn. Motion approved. Second. Roll call, please. Shannon. Yes. Michael. Yes. Jana. Yes. Christy. Yes. Jennifer. Yes.